What if I told you that you've been pouring your Guinness all wrong? Now don't worry, it's not your fault. It's Guinness's. Order a pint of the Black Stout in a pub, and you're going to notice something very strange about the beer. Its bubbles are sinking. But wait, bubbles are supposed to rise all the time. Is Guinness defying the laws of physics? Not exactly. Every Guinness is supposed to be poured into a specially crafted tulip glass. But that glass, it's designed to manipulate the bubbles to turn the pour into a performance, making you wait longer than you need to. But let's back up a bit, and I'll explain something about how the bubbles in a Guinness stout are different than most other beers. So the weird thing about stout beers is the bubbles inside, they're very small. This is William Lee. He's a professor of industrial mathematics at the University of Huddersfield in the UK. And his research has found a problem with the traditional Guinness pint glass. Most beers are carbonated using carbon dioxide. But Guinness bubbles are filled with nitrogen. This is what gives the stout that iconic silky texture in your mouth and distinctive creamy head resting above the dark beer. When you look closely at a Guinness while it's settling, the bubbles are actually falling instead of rising. Whereas in a beer which has carbon dioxide bubbles, the bubbles are bigger, and so they're less affected by flow, and the bubbles will just go up no matter what. Then what exactly is causing Guinness bubbles to do something crazy and sink? Lee and his team devised a number of equations to explain this odd behavior. We made a simplified model which only has the physics we thought was important in to see if that really did still predict the sinking bubbles. Now, these equations might not look so simple to the untrained eye, but they helped Lee identify a problem with that specially designed Guinness glass. Well, the sinking bubbles, they're very much due to the shape of the glass. So as the bubbles go up, they're moving away from the sloping walls and behind they're leaving just beer, which is denser. So you've got dense beer beside the walls and of course the dense beer sinks, and then as it sinks, it carries the bubbles with it. So that's kind of why you see the sinking bubbles in Guinness, with the small bubbles which get carried down by the currents. And here is where Guinness has exploited the sinking bubble phenomenon, making it a signature part of its branded pouring presentation. The pour is marketed by Guinness as a six-step process, including a special pint glass, a correct angle of pouring, and even a mid-pour waiting period in which the beer separates from the head before it is topped off. And in pubs around the world, it has become a time-honored ritual. A bulk of that time is as much about marketing as it is about the physics. You may be waiting longer than you would for another beer, but that's by design. You can't be rushed. As we always say, good things come to those who wait. Now, you might think that the beer flowing into the glass is causing a current that affects the bubbles. And you'd be right, but it's small and not even factored into Lee's models. You see, the bigger effect comes from the tulip shape of the Guinness glass. So we think that afterwards, when things are more or less still, a second effect affecting the current is going on. And that's essentially the bubbles trying to rise. But depending on the shape of the walls, that's going to cause bubbles to either separate from the beer or accumulate. And then once you have that, you've got variations in density. And of course, variations in density are going to cause flow. So if the Guinness glass isn't the perfect glass for a pint of Guinness, then what is? So the ideal glass would be kind of martini shaped, but basically gigantic and looking very strange. Wait a minute, a martini glass? I mean, just look at it. The idea, it's absurd. Yet, it's remarkable how quickly it settles. But this still leaves you with a choice of waiting or using something ridiculous. Will Lee's work help solve this? That's somewhere in between the standard pint glass and the gigantic martini glass. There's something where settling happens a bit quicker than it happens at the moment but which doesn't look totally ridiculous and beer drinkers might actually use. For now, what you choose depends on a marketing tradition, 
versus getting to your beer faster. What's your choice? For me, one of the important things is I get my drink very quickly. So I think I would be tempted to order Guinness in a giant cocktail glass rather than waiting a long time for the pint to settle. Even if it was rather unmaneuverable, I might have to drink it out of a straw so it's not to spill it on me. 